have an urgent message for the body of Christ, mostly newly saved brothers and sisters, and for unbelievers. Things aren't the way they used to be. In 2021 to 2022, there was an incredible uptick in natural disasters all around the world, and most of them were almost supernatural because they occurred in locations they never have beforehand. For example, there were significantly more fires all over the United States than we normally had, but Greece in particular had a big one and even requested foreign aid in putting it out. There was a bombardment of tropical storms and hurricanes in the Pacific and Caribbean. The Gulf states got bombarded with so many tropical storms, meteorologists had to go deep into the Greek alphabet to find names for them because they ran out of letters in the English alphabet. There were tornadoes in Turkey and flooding in France and China to the point where first story buildings were underwater. That is not normal for these regions. Fires here in Southern California were so bad, the sun and the moon cured blood red through the haze and smoke. There were significantly more seismic level six and seven earthquakes in the world than in previous years. La Palma was erupting for what, three months? There were birds just dropping out of the sky in Mexico and there was a huge water spout off the coast of Italy. If anyone wants to search for yourselves to verify my claims, I encourage you to do so. I'll link Dutch Sins and the two preachers channels in the description down below. Go and see for yourselves. The phenomena were well documented on their channels. Some people believe it was caused by the use or experimentation of directed energy weapons. Either way, something is very, very wrong in the world. And coincidentally, there is much more evil in the world than there used to be. Have you noticed that? We know the people in power are lying to us. The world has seen murder and harm done on a massive scale for financial gain and the thinning of the herd. These same people are promoting the ingestion of bugs and artificial meat rather than real meat that the Lord has created for our consumption. They cause food shortages and proudly proclaim, you'll have nothing and be happy, and you'll eat bugs and like it. Some of you are going to think that I'm crazy or weird. Nonetheless, I have a burden to get this message out there, and if it weren't for this heavy burden, I would have abstained from making this video or appearing on any social media platforms. That being said, I am very much out of my comfort zone. However, I feel this is necessary, and the Lord put it on my heart to deliver this message as a warning. He told me, gather the remnant. Time is of the essence. The Lord has been very merciful and given us a long period of grace. However, that time is about to come to an end. For the longest time, many people within the body of Christ have treated the Lord like he is a genie that we can go to for the fulfillment of our heart's desires or to deliver us in our time of crisis then just forget about him and continue as if nothing ever happened. We know his law, yet many of us who call ourselves Christians continue living in defiance of his laws and make excuses such as, I'll just repent later, or it's under the blood of Jesus, so I'm covered. They treat Jehovah like he's a joke. They disrespect the Lord and continue acting as if there are no consequences to their actions. There will be judgment, and this period of grace that he has given us will soon be over. Time is running out. Many of you within the body of Christ know that we are in the last days. It is undeniable because in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5, through 5, it was prophesied. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness but denying its power. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1-3, through 3, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars, whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. And finally, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 14, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 
there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. We have seen most of these things come to pass. This perfectly describes our generation, that is, those who are classified as Generation Z. It is self-evident if someone were to look on Instagram or TikTok. They have made idols out of themselves and elevated themselves and one another above the Most High God, Elohim. They build their kingdoms of followers looking for praise in the forms of comments, subscriptions, and likes. All of these forms of adoration are forms of worship. They worship themselves and they worship their idols. It is not even subtle anymore. In Korean and Japanese pop cultures, they even openly call celebrities idols and express it with their mouths. These people have exalted themselves above the Lord and their fans have participated in worshiping false gods and must humble themselves or face his judgment. Additionally, many in this world have made money their idol. Even many celebrities and TikTokers have produced songs and music videos promoting greed and the desire for worldly things and in doing so, placed themselves into bondage by devoting themselves to their own selfish desires and giving themselves over to mammon. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, we are instructed, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Heed this warning. The Lord's window of grace will close soon. It is time and has been time to get right with the Lord for a while. He has given us adequate warning that we are in the last days and his return is soon. I'm only here to deliver the last warning bell and call the last wave of the remnant for our work. Time is short. We have much to do. God is calling us to fulfill the purpose he has called us for in these times. Intercessors and prayer warriors, evangelists, and those with an anointing for deliverance, wake up and receive your calling. The time is now for us to begin our part in spreading the good news and playing our part in fighting the good fight and the battle for souls. The church at large is emaciated. Most of us are broken and tired. We feel as if we can't go on or even feel helpless when the enemy comes at us during our trials. Most of us do not understand why it is happening, how to defend ourselves from the fiery darts, how to maintain our focus on the king or our faith in him, or launch an assault on the kingdom of darkness. We do not know how to wage spiritual warfare in a biblical sense because we are not being taught in churches or by our pastors or priests, and we are left beaten up by the enemy. The church age is long dead, my beloved brothers and sisters. It died when certain pastors began preaching a prosperity gospel and welcomed mystical false doctrine and witchcraft into the churches, and when the houses of worship shut their doors while bars and strip clubs were allowed to remain open because they were considered essential and when certain pastors began demanding their congregation members begin showing their cards, verifying their vaccination status for entry into the house of God. The Holy Spirit is not present in those places or those people. No, my family in Christ. Instead, we have entered into the kingdom age, where we enter the picture and begin to play our part. In order to do so, we need to understand how the war is waged. Number one, faith is the currency of heaven. It is written, Believe and you shall receive. Trust in the Lord, your God, for he is the one who carries you throughout your trials. Number two, he will not allow you to enter a trial unless he knows that you are capable of handling it. The purpose is to refine you like silver and to shame the devil. Number three, know your identity and the authority that you have as a child of God. You share the same authority as Jesus Christ and you have authority over all angels, powers, and authorities. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22 states this. If you don't know your identity in Christ, you will not be able to exercise your authority that was given to you through Jesus Christ. And it is the enemy's goal to distract you with attacks during your trial so that you forget your identity as a child of God and do not exercise your authority. God has already given you the victory, as stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Therefore, you will not fail unless you surrender your power and victory to the enemy. 
In doing so, you forfeit your purpose and your destiny and give the devil legal rights over your life. Number four, recognize that the battle begins in the mind and the enemy's favorite tactics are psychological operations. If you can shut down the devil in your mind, you can focus on your relationship with God and his mission for you. Remember, it is not what the enemy does to attack you, but how you handle the situation. Number five, the most important part is to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. To do this, just start a conversation with him. Talk to him at any point in the day. Study scripture and he will speak to you through his word. Worship him by complimenting and praising him from your heart. Write a letter to him. Listen to worship music or take notes from the book of Psalms to study how King David worshiped the Lord to understand what that means. Build that relationship with him so that you can hear his voice and not be confused by the enemy when he comes to you as an angel of light. Number six, pray for discernment. If you are farther along in your walk with the Lord, you will be able to discern what times we are in and how crucial it is for us to get our act together. It is vital for us to study the word of God because it is like our manual to life, almost like it's one big open book test. If you want to be thoroughly prepared, I highly recommend John Ramirez's books and e-courses. They taught me the tactics of the enemy, how to thwart them, and help me develop the mindset and confidence that we need to have in the fight, which is that we are conquerors because of Jesus Christ. Number seven, understand that the devil attacks us because we are made in the image of God. We are his most beloved creation, and the devil is jealous, given that he fell from grace after his betrayal of God and attempt to usurp the Lord. He hates every fiber of our being, and after he lost the war in heaven, his pride still has a hold of him, and he wants a rematch. The angels fought the first battle that took place in the heavens. Since the devil has been cast down to the earth, this is where the new fight takes place, and we are the ones who are sent to battle during the second round. This puts in perspective how strong the body of Christ is supposed to be. As Brother John Ramirez puts it, we're supposed to be giving the devil a beatdown like a pinata at a birthday party. We aren't supposed to be stripped of the knowledge of how to fight and conquer. We aren't supposed to be passive like cupcakes and figure, oh, it's all in God's hands. He has full control. Yes, it's true that the Lord is fully in charge. However, he will always do his part. Realize that we have our part to do also, and he will not do it for us. Brothers and sisters, we need to be aware that churches and people are quitting on God. But we don't have that option to quit. We need to live like we have that mentality and a mentality of a conqueror and know that our lives depend on our walk with God because at this point in time, they do. We will not survive what is to come without a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you thought that was bad for the past two years, wait until you see what is to come because there will be more, more than just COVID, more than just supernatural disasters. The devil and the satanic cabal are trying to rush the emergence of the Antichrist. The abomination of desolation. That is why things in the world keep getting worse and worse by the day. The book of Matthew states that there will eventually be persecution of the church. Even now, when people start preaching on the street about the grace of God and his goodness, there are people who will get belligerent and spew hateful and vulgar language. Often they will begin to yell at the evangelists who are spreading the good news. Why? Because they hate God. They hate righteousness because they know that what they are doing is evil but they take pleasure in it, and God forbids these evil deeds. Romans chapter 2, verse 8 describes these people as those who are selfishly ambitious and do not obey the truth, but take part in unrighteousness. And as such, the consequences are wrath and peace, and we are left beaten up by the enemy. The church age is long dead, my beloved brothers and sisters. It died when certain pastors began preaching a prosperity gospel, and welcome mystical false doctrine and witchcraft into the churches, and when the houses of worship shut their doors while bars and strip clubs were allowed to remain open because they were considered essential, and when certain pastors began demanding their congregation members begin showing their cards, verifying their vaccination status for entry into the house of God. The Holy Spirit is not present in those places or those people. No, my family in Christ. Instead, we have entered into the kingdom age, where we enter the picture and begin to play our part. In order to do so, we need to understand how the war is waged. Number one, faith is the currency of heaven. It is written, believe and you shall receive. Trust in the Lord, your God, for he is the one who carries you throughout your trials. 
Number two, he will not allow you to enter a trial unless he knows that you are capable of handling it. The purpose is to refine you like silver and to shame the devil. Number three, know your identity and the authority that you have as a child of God. You share the same authority as Jesus Christ, and you have authority over all angels, powers, and authorities. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22 states this. If you don't know your identity in Christ, you will not be able to exercise your authority that was given to you through Jesus Christ. And it is the enemy's goal to distract you with attacks during your trial so that you forget your identity as a child of God and do not exercise your authority. God has already given you the victory, as stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Therefore, you will not fail unless you surrender your power and victory to the enemy. In doing so, you forfeit your purpose and your destiny and give the devil legal rights over your life. Number four, recognize that the battle begins in the mind and the enemy's favorite tactics are psychological operations. If you can shut down the devil in your mind, you can focus on your relationship with God and his mission for you. Remember, it is not what the enemy does to attack you, but how you handle the situation. Number five, the most important part is to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. To do this, just start a conversation with him. Talk to him at any point in the day. Study scripture and he will speak to you through his word. Worship him by complimenting and praising him from your heart. Write a letter to him. Listen to worship music or take notes from the book of Psalms to study how King David worshiped the Lord to understand what that means. Build that relationship with him so that you can hear his voice and not be confused by the enemy when he comes to you as an angel of light. Number six, pray for discernment. If you are farther along in your walk with the Lord, you will be able to discern what times we are in and how crucial it is for us to get our act together. It is vital for us to study the word of God because it is like our manual to life almost like it's one big open book test. If you want to be thoroughly prepared, I highly recommend John Ramirez's books and e-courses. They taught me the tactics of the enemy, how to thwart them and help me develop the mindset and confidence that we need to have in the fight, which is that we are conquerors because of Jesus Christ. Number seven, understand that the devil attacks us because we are made in the image of God. We are his most beloved creation and the devil is jealous given that he fell from grace after his betrayal of God and attempt to usurp the Lord. He hates every fiber of our being, and after he lost the war in heaven, his pride still has a hold of him, and he wants a rematch. The angels fought the first battle that took place in the heavens. Since the devil has been cast down to the earth, this is where the new fight takes place, and we are the ones who are sent to battle during the second round. This puts in perspective how strong the body of Christ is supposed to be. As Brother John Ramirez puts it, we're supposed to be giving the devil a beat down like a pinata at a birthday party. We aren't supposed to be stripped of the knowledge of how to fight and conquer. We aren't supposed to be passive like cupcakes and figure, oh, it's all in God's hands. He has full control. Yes, it's true that the Lord is fully in charge. However, he will always do his part. Realize that we have our part to do also, and he will not do it for us. Brothers and sisters, we need to be aware that churches and people are quitting on God. But we don't have that option to quit. We need to live like we have that mentality and a mentality of a conqueror and know that our lives depend on our walk with God. Because at this point in time, they do. We will not survive what is to come without a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you thought that was bad for the past two years, wait until you see what is to come. Because there will be more. More than just COVID more than just supernatural disasters. The devil and the satanic cabal are trying to rush the emergence of the Antichrist, the abomination of desolation. That is why things in the world keep getting worse and worse by the day. The book of Matthew states that there will eventually be persecution of the church. Even now, when people start preaching on the street about the grace of God and his goodness, there are people who will get belligerent and spew hateful and vulgar language. Often they will begin to yell at the evangelists who are spreading the good news. Why? Because they hate God. They hate righteousness because they know that indignation. For the record, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-11 through 11 states that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God, unless 
they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior and repent. To repent means to change one's thinking and one's ways from disobedience of God's law to obedience. On most platforms, that scripture that I just read is enough to get me a strike or a ban for hate speech. On the contrary, it is not an act of hatred, but telling the truth is an act of love. How far humanity has fallen. How wicked we have become. Do not be like them. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 states that those who perished did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. If you have not given your heart to Jesus but would like to, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10 provides the solution. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins. I confess that I need a savior and that my deeds are not enough to get me into heaven or pay the price of my sins. You have granted me the opportunity for eternal life and I accept you as my Lord and savior. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come into my heart. Please take more of me and give me more of you so that I may become more like Christ. I repent of my sins and I wish to be renewed and changed to be like you. And I want you as my father and as my friend. I thank you for this opportunity your sacrifice, and your love, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God has chosen you to be a herald during these last days, but it is up to you whether or not you want to rise to the occasion and be all that you can be for the Lord, because many are called, but few are chosen. Only those who accept God's call are those he considers chosen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Get ready.